Hello everybody and welcome back to more Warhammer Fantasy Lore with me, the Border Prince. Today we're covering more Dogs of War Regiments of Renown. Lumpin Croups Fighting Cocks. It comes in pints? It was never really Lumpin's intention to become a mercenary and warrior of renown. In fact, he has spent most of his time trying to avoid this career path. But however unintentional it may be, he has become a mercenary captain of renown with a fierce regiment of halflings that with arrow and sword, uh, well, I guess they would be daggers to a human, anyways, they are skilled and dedicated mercenaries. A force in demand across the old world as skirmishers, trackers and bowmen. Their killing power and sheer awesomeness is greater than all of the weakling hobbits of Middle-earth combined, and there ain't no rings in this story, at least not that kind. <laughs> the saga of Lump <laughs> The saga of Lumpin Croup the most famous halfling alive, begins in Mootland with his young mother and a travelling carrot salesman, a wink wink. Anyways, when the girl's family discovered what had happened, the carrot salesman suffered the unfortunate accident of choking on a horseshoe shortly afterwards. His family are blacksmiths by the way. <clears throat> Nine months later, she gave birth to young Lumpin, but the circumstances of his birth and his shock of ginger hair like his entrepreneurial father made his upbringing difficult as his grandparents were unbearably mean and resentful of his existence. His mum wasn't having a great time either and she fell to drink. So yeah, pretty shitty childhood to be honest. Anyways, Lumpin not one to moan his lot in life and after running away from home, he became a pickpocket and poacher and general ne'er-do-well with a passion for root vegetables. With a pretty nifty income as a poacher, he sold his wares to various shady landlords around the moot, until one day coming to the old pig and bucket in Beggar's End, a slightly shady establishment, to drop off some more hares, he found that the pub was actually full of angry gamekeepers, led by the famously crazy Ned Hamfist. Instead of getting the beating he richly deserved, Lumpin launched into a great and complicated tale that was originally intended to get him out of a kicking, but eventually ended up with the whole in signing up with the Ginger Hobbit's new company of adventurers, set to explore the world and enjoy the riches and banquets he had promised. And so, Lumpin Croup's Fighting Cox was born. Since then, Lumpin has daily tried to give his new recruits the slip, running off into the woods and disappearing from the camp. Unfortunately for him, the rest of the merry band are actually better trackers than Lumpin, and always managed to catch up with him, treating these flights as training exercises to hone their skills. Lumpin has a way with words, and the other hobbits have begun to worship him. Shockingly to Lumpin, but not his lads who have unshakable faith in him, the Fighting Cocks are an actually rather effective mercenary company. The constant training exercises have turned them into expert trackers and woodsmen, as well as crack marksmen to boot. Winning fame in several battles, they are now in high demand. On one memorable occasion, Lumpin managed to save an entire army from destruction when he decided to take his cocks and sneak out from the rear of his new employer's army, directly away from the sounds of conflict, when they happened to directly run into an enemy sneak attack, which they fought off until reinforcements arrived to defeat the potentially deadly rear assaults. Everyone was impressed by Lumpin's foresight, not least Lumpin himself, and since then the coin has flowed into the company's coffers, and Lumpin has started to adjust to his new position, and the affection of the rest of the fighting cocks. So much so, that on the eve of every battle, and every night, he can be seen devising new training exercises. The Cursed Company now to one of the most awesome forces a commander can hire, the terrifying cursed company of Richter Kruger. Awesome name. Now, the full details of the origins of this regiment of infamy is shrouded in mystery, as they have been operational for centuries, becoming almost mythical throughout the old world and beyond. Richter was once a living, breathing mercenary captain, willing to fight for anyone so long as they paid enough coin. At some point, Richter came into the employ of a necromancer who was conducting a war against Osland and had gradually been winning this war of attrition to take the capital of Wolfenburg. Eventually, however, the Imperials managed to turn the tide and forced back the undead encirclement, pushing the necromancer's forces 
back into the forests in an unrelenting war which did not allow the necromancer the time to use the dark arts to rebuild his dwindling legion of undeath. The Imperials sent an agent to bribe Richter and therefore deprived the necromancer of much needed troops. Richter, seeing he was on the losing side and ever hungry for coin, accepted and at the final battle betrayed his employer, giving the victory to the Empire. As the necromancer bled out with his last words he invoked a curse upon Richter. At first, one would assume this was just vengeance as the captain's body began to wither and rot away until he collapsed in a pile of decayed flesh, bone and armour. But it was more than that. The next night, Richter arose again, now as a wraith, or some form of undead white. Unlike the majority of undead, Richter is fully conscious and in control of his actions, not being enthralled to a sorcerer or vampire. He is undead, however, and life holds no flavour for him, all of the world seeming grey. Later, Richter discovered he could not be killed, as whenever he was cut down, he would arise again the next day. Also, he discovered that any enemy that fell to his hand would arise again themselves and follow Richter's commands, meaning that eventually he had a legion of skeletal warriors consisting of troops from every race he encountered. With this force, he marched across the entire world seeking battle in a terrible mirror image of his former life, hoping each battle he led his troops into would be his last and he can finally die. The first company appeared to simply join aside rather than take payment, but the shambling host he commands is an odd spectacle even to those with experience of battling the undead, as it consists of skeletal warriors from every corner of the old and the new world, from elves to orcs to humans, reflecting the vast journey Richter has been on, trying to finally die. Parizo's Lost Legion Are you a poverty-stricken youth? Do you want riches beyond your wildest dreams? Join Parizo's Lost Legion, trained in Lustria, recruiting now at the sign of the upturned halfling. We know where the gold is. Recruitment poster for the Lost Legion. The Tabaro expedition was recruited from the downtrodden, hopeless youths of that city. Many such expeditions have set out from Tilia, and almost all never returned from the jungle continent of Lustria. Parizo's Lost Legion are the survivors who did manage this feat and although only a third of them survived under the command of Captain Parizo, they fulfilled the dreams of every pauper and returned home with pockets filled with gold. Parizo was an experienced, though young, mercenary captain when he was hired to lead one of three regiments on this expedition to Lustria. Unfortunately, things went awry as soon as they made the perilous ocean crossing. Although Parizo warned that their transport ships were likely to mutiny as soon as the troops had left for land, and that it would therefore be inadvisable to leave their pay chests on board, he was outvoted by the other two commanders. When the inevitable mutiny did occur, and the ships set sail and left their comrades on the beach to die, and worse, die penilessly, the soldiers did what you would expect and mutinied against their captains, casting them adrift in the mango swamps to die, and proclaimed Parizo their new captain and called themselves the Lost Legion. All knew that following Parizo's leadership was the only way to survive and accepted his command to remain encamped on beach and train in the dual use of pike and crossbow, the main armaments of Tilia, believing that being flexible in both missile and close quarter weapons was going to be essential in the jungle conditions. After a few weeks of training and merging all three regiments into one large force, they set off into the jungle. By this time, the bad elements within the force had either made a run for the jungle and were never heard from again, or were dead, either from execution or disease and exhaustion from the new climate. Parizo led his now formidable legion deep into the jungles to find adventure, riches, or death. After a hard march through the jungle, they eventually came across a lizardman city. Entering, they found it deserted and full of gold. Taking all they could carry, they attempted to leave via one of the city's main causeways, but as they marched across it, they were attacked repeatedly by lizardmen. Due to the dual armament of crossbow and pike, however, Parizo's troops were able to repulse skink archers and saurus warriors with limited casualties, while they inflicted terrible losses on the enemy. Eventually, a big fat frog came along, and seeing what the Lost Legion had done to his warriors, began to think that maybe it was better to put these guys to use. It seems that Parizo began to have the same thought and considered offering his services to the slan. These thoughts were odd to him though, almost as if they had been placed there by someone else. 
Anyhow, the Lost Legion left their booty on the causeway and retreated back into the city and camped in the plaza, awakening the next morning to find an even bigger stack of gold as well as water and food placed before them. They were, however, surrounded by lizardmen on all sides except for one exit, leading south. Parezo, understanding that a kind of bargain had been struck, gathered the loot and supplies and marched his legion south. More supplies were left for them as they marched on for miles and miles and day after day southwards, being guided by these care packages of food and water. Eventually, the landscape began to change, becoming a more rotty kind of jungle, where they first encountered the undead of the Vampire Coast, and understanding that this was the foe the Lizardmen wanted them to fight, set to it with gusto. They cut through undead host after undead host, as they continued onwards until they eventually reached the coast. After doing the really important work of looting the sunken wrecks along the beaches, they found a rotting hulk that was still seaworthy, and began to repair it with timbers from other wrecks. Eventually, they set sail for home, with their vast pile of treasure safely in the hold. Just as their ship was beginning to sink, they spotted land, and managed to get ashore, finding themselves in Araby. The emirs of Araby, out of fear of what this grizzled legion might do, hired them as mercenaries to essentially get them to move on. Eventually, the Lost Legion, after more fighting throughout the region, made their way to Sartosa, and then on home to Tilia, where they have become a legend in the constant wars between states and famous for their wealth, with each soldier having more coin in their possession than most nobles. So rich is Parizo, being the captain and so being the recipient of the largest share of loot, that he has been the target of constant assassination attempts by those hoping to take his vast treasure for themselves. The Lost Legion's versatile method of war is fairly unique and has been put to good use, as instead of disbanding upon their return, they have continued together as a mercenary company under Captain Parizo. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this little exploration into some of the more colourful regiments of renown in the Warhammer world. Uh, one day, hopefully, some of these guys will make an appearance in Total War, we can hope. And if you did enjoy this, please feel free to use the links below if you'd like to support the channel. But please remember to subscribe and like this video as well. But subscribe mostly, so you can keep up to date with this and all the other kinds of stuff we do on this channel. So yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers.